today. Much better hosting. Uh, the A-list. My, yes, yeah, <laughs> my co-hosts, John Kilstrap and Maria Larson. Welcome. Thank you. Happy Thanks. to be here. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate it. I, I almost didn't make it. I didn't know if I'd be back today. So thank you, Maria, for... You're quite welcome. I was happy in. I changed my schedule around. So when we were talking about it last night, I was like, if you want me, I'll come. So hey, here I'm I am. always intimidated by you because oh, of your stop, presence. So, stop, so I always stop, feel stop, that, stop. that it's... It, 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 you have to stop there. <laughs> this is the guy you should be intimidated by. No, <laughs> not me. I, I'm never intimidated by John because all he does is make stuff up. I mean... <laughs> you know, that's true. It, yep, it, yep, it, yep. How hard is that, right? I, I couldn't do it. I asked him to write my biography, but he told me to go to hell. So I, I would imagine. I would imagine. <laughs> you wanted me to pay him you're money. You're off the island now that you stopped bidding right. on the yep. being the bad guy in his next book. You know, I and Bill's you complained about so. being outbid, but, but you no, stopped bidding. No, no, I, I didn't complain. You couldn't about have bailed being out when it went to four thousand yeah. dollars. No, you, I, bid, you you bailed out early. I, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to make sure I bid on this that somebody doesn't get this thing cheap. Yes. Right? So I, I bid on a few items, and I had that's limit. the way to do it, and, and man. I, I, I make sure they go for what they're worth, um, but I don't necessarily and then you get need out. them. You like, don't I'm need out. anything. I'm, so, I'm and, with and my, you. And my wife hates me bidding on, on auction items too, because she, she's like, "What, what do you We're going to get you that because you you've gotten be you've gotten yeah. the Florida house before. You've I got the Florida of... house. I got a jacuzzi. Okay. I've gotten, <laughs> A number of things that I didn't need, but I've been on. But I always enjoy that event, and um, I, I make sure that the items go for what they And that's, I appreciate that. And people have told me, you know, this is not something, this is not an auction where you go to get a deal, um, but it's where you go to raise money. So, And that's a misconception. People go right? to charity auctions thinking that they're, they're there to Yay! get a cheap deal. That's not why you're there. No. And actually, you should overpay a little bit exactly and, and Are people paid three what thirty five hundred dollars for bourbon right now <laughs> well and the experience of hanging out getting the glasses th things like it, it's much more than bourbon but yeah. i will say this bill's not here so we can make fun of him a little <laughs> he he was sitting right next to my wife so he was two seats from me and it took him about 12 minutes to realize I was the one bidding against him. <laughs> so he, he kept looking around the room and, and I kept just like throwing my thumb up. Right, right, to quietly. Because you don't have a paddle per yeah. se. Yeah. There's just somebody around you. So yeah. another funny story, two people on either side of the room were bidding each, against each other on the last item, the Kathy and Michael Santa Barbara pontoon thing. Yeah. And they ended up each getting it for a thousand bucks and then they came together and they were like we didn't even know you were bidding they were going to take each other on the first one and now they have to find more okay time. enough of this is time for my shameless self-promotion okay <laughs> I, I i have a book event coming up yes. um oh, on this, this this coming weekend at the train station in shepherdstown it is called Unraveling the Unknown. It's a panel discussion that's hosted by Four Seasons Books. And I am going to be there with Jay Dennison Reed, who is no relation to Jay Jonah Jameson, who was <laughs> Peter Parker's editor. And also with Ellen Crosby, who is with us via telephone. I've known Ellen for, I don't know, 25 years, I guess. I taught her son at the Governor's School, the University of Richmond. I don't know, was that 1844, something like that? I think... Uh, mm -hmm. It was, it was earlier, actually, yeah. but we won't tell. <laughs> and, Ellen, you'll be happy to know that Maria Lawrenson, who's sitting at my left, also uses a Franklin planner. You're the two people, last two people in the world who still Not use true. a Franklin Not planner. Not true. I love it, Ellen. I love it. It keeps Good. me organized. I'm a planner. Yep. Sounds like a, <laughs> sounds like a plan. So, Ellen. We'll start with you. Yeah. Um, All right. Ellen and I have been part of a writer's, I guess, critique group. We call ourselves the Rumpus Writers mm -hmm. because we started meeting in my rumpus room in 2009. Nine. What, what is a rumpus room? It's a basement. Okay. Just and um, It was a very, very nice basement. It was okay. Was kind of a joke. It was okay. And the plural... The plural of rumpus, as we've come to discover, is rumpi. So we, when we write each other, we always say, dear rumpi. So tell us a, a, a bit about you and your books. Well, um, I am. I live in Northern Virginia. Um, I and as I say, John and I have known each other for many years. Um, 
I'm going to be there to talk about my new book, which came out on May 7th. It's called Dodge and Burn. It is my 17th book. Um, I, it's, a, it's the fourth book in a series about a woman who's named Sophie Medina. She's a photojournalist, and she lives in Washington, D.C. And I live, as I say, I live in Northern Virginia, but not far from D.C. Um, John and I used to be neighbors. Um, and so in this book, um, Sophie has agreed to take photograph for a very wealthy philanthropist who has a fantastic art collection. He donates to the Smithsonian and the National Gallery and everything else. So she shows up to take the photographs and happens to notice some of the amazing art in his home. Um, and she's asked to come back to take pictures. Um, he's, he's, uh, he's, he needs an author photo. So when she comes back the second time, she um, finds the door to his house unlocked. She goes inside. He is dead. And one of the things that she notices is that in this house of magnificent art, there was an, um, an icon that she had seen earlier, um, a Russian icon, and she sees the, 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 the case that it was in is in the studio, but the icon's missing, and it appears to be the only thing missing. So in this house full of fabulous art, why is only this somewhat valuable icon the only thing missing? And she comes to find out later that the murder weapon was her tripod. Um, so she becomes, she's immediately in the crosshairs of the, of the DC police. Um, and she also finds out she has a half brother who she never had known about. And he happens to maybe be an art thief. So she starts to wonder if she's not being framed for a murder. So Evan does amazing amounts of research for the books she does. So Jim, Jay yep. Dennison is actually Jim. Tell yes. us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? This, uh, it's great to meet everybody here in the room. Move up to your mic oh, just sorry. a uh, yep. tad so we can hear you. Okay, sorry. Is this better? Yep, much okay, better. Great. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm relatively new to the to the author world here. Um, I wrote uh, two books. My first one was published in 2021, and my second was published last year. They're called Clifford's War. It's a series about a private investigator. He was a uh, disabled military veteran, and after he got out of the, uh, after he was discharged, medically discharged from the Army, he started a private investigator practice, uh, first in Kentucky. When uh, he took a couple jobs, one of the jobs was from a local crime syndicate, and uh, after he completed Wait, that job... He, sorry, he, yeah. took a, he took a job from a local crime syndicate? Yeah. They posted in the paper? Oh, yes, yeah, they have, they have to test. Yeah. On Indeed. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Reddit, it was Reddit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But, uh, no, it was, a, it was a job he couldn't refuse, obviously. Okay, yeah. So, um, uh, when he completed that job, the mafia thinks that they own him, and he had to go to, go to war with the mafia. He had to fight the gang to get out. So that's what the first book's about. And uh, I'm going to hold it up for your viewers here, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, this is the first book here, Clifford's War, Bluegrass Battleground is the subtitle. And uh, my newest book is Clifford's War Without End. And that takes place in Northern Virginia, D.C., you know, metro area. And um, he moved there to work for his former army commander in D.C. And um, one of the routine... Um, research uh, jobs he was doing. Uh, one of his teammates witnessed a U.S. senator assassinated. So the FBI brings the, the team on to help investigate. They find some government corruption, you know, like you would. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and uh, so they, they get targeted by the same assassins that killed the senator. So that's, that's what the second book's about. And I, I do have a third book coming out this year in September. It's called Ty, and it uh, surrounds two notorious killers uh, in Kentucky, and it's a prequel to the. Now, are you on the same uh, guilt strap uh, schedule where you have to pump out a certain amount of books at a certain amount of time, or do you get to write as you wish and please? You know, uh, no, I, I, I don't have a timeline. I'm, I'm an independently published author, okay. so I, I create my own timeline. And I, I, after my second book, which was published last year, I did kind of take a, a short hiatus of writing, and. Um, uh, it just took a little while for me to kind of get back into the mode to, to write. And I, I want to say I took the least amount of time so far writing my third novel because I had it already planned out and plotted in my head. And the uh, least amount of time, meaning how long? Um, I started in December of last year, and I finished the first rough draft of the manuscript last month. So. so how did you and John get hooked up, and how do we get back to the, the event, John? So I don't, I, I, the event was actually arranged by the folks at Four Seasons Books. So they, yeah. they reached out. We, I, 
Actually, yeah, I got the Four Seasons the Books is who? That, that's Four Seasons Books guys. is the that's bookstore published. in in Shepherdstown. That's yep. the bookstore. Okay. Right, yes. and there are tickets involved. You if if you want to go, you need to go to fourseasonsbooks dot com and reach out to them, and um, and show up. It's one o'clock on Saturday. Now, much, Ellen, how you're, much are the tickets? Um, well, the tickets are free, but if you want to you know, have first in line for the buffet, because uh, I, I there is food cater, in line. Yeah, okay. I offered to cater the event, oh, and no. uh, uh, the, the buffet tickets are fifty dollars. Fantastic. Okay, does that come with the book? I believe it does come with the book. Right? Okay. Yeah. Right. So, John, talk a little bit about you and your um, your involvement. It sounds like. Um, in my former life, one of the things that I used to recognize is you write about what you know, and it sounds like um, the two of you plus Ellen sort of at least have your setting in a place that you know we're well familiar with, and, um, you know, just talk a little bit about that. Well, yeah, in my case, yes, I have a lot of background, not so much, I, I, I didn't bang on doors and shoot people, but I know a lot of folks who did, and I've trained with a lot of folks who did, and I'm very much a gun guy. I used to make explosives, and I'm a bomb guy. I used to make bombs. So that's that's where my background comes from. And I, Ellen, I want to get back to you, and, and Sophie is a photojournalist, and you were a journalist, and you were a journalist not just in this country, right? That's right. That's right. Um, well, my husband was a journalist, and he was um, a foreign correspondent, so we had some interesting posts overseas. Our first post was uh, Geneva, Switzerland, and then from there we moved to Moscow, and I gradually sort of got pulled into his world. I started getting asked if, by some of his friends, I love to write, and I started getting asked by some of his friends if I'd take on freelance assignments, and so by the time we got to Moscow, um, ABC News was looking for a radio correspondent, and even though I had no experience in radio, it was the Soviet Union in those days. Um, they were, you know, really looking for people to, to work in that country. And so I became the, um, the radio correspondent for ABC News in Moscow. And so by the time we had our last assignment, which was London, I knew I wanted to write about Russia. Uh, so my first book was um, written about a journalist who was in, in Moscow. And then after that, I wrote 12 books in another series about a woman who owns a vineyard in Virginia. But that's another story. But the one, the book that I'm bringing to Shepherdstown on Saturday is about the photojournalist, which is something that I... Um, I had some wonderful photographers I worked with. I also freelance for the Washington Post. And I had some wonderful photographers I worked with. So I was really interested in that great photograph that goes with every story. So I think, Maria, you probably know something about that, too. That You know, you get all the words, but, but the photograph, you know, that's, that can be the thing that's so mesmerizing that everybody remembers. Sometimes so I mean, you don't even need the words, Ellen. <laughs> the photograph tells you're the story. Right. You're right. Absolutely. So I, I made her a photojournalist. I actually talked to the, I don't remember his name, but I talked to the guy, that famous picture of Bobby Kennedy on the floor of the kitchen with the, oh, the, the, right. the uh, bus boy that's kneeling next to him. That was one of, it, it, he didn't have a, uh, it's called an auto drive. Uh, he didn't have an auto drive. So it, it was uh -huh. the thumbing, it was over his head and was just pointing. And that was one of a dozen or so pictures that he took. And, of course, there are a dozen or so other photographers who were taking similar pictures. And it was pure happenstance. That was not a composed picture. And, of course, it becomes iconic. And I'm, I'm going to guess the guy made a gajillion dollars off of, right, that, right. off of that awful moment. But it's interesting that so much of photojournalism is happenstance. Well, you know, the other thing, though, is um, I, for, the book, for this book, um, I have a good friend who was in Moscow with me. He's now one of the managing directors of the Associated Press. And so he put me in touch with a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer. And we had a long talk. And one of the things he said to me is, we take pictures of people on their, the best day of their life and the worst day of their life. And so we tried. And I, that really struck me. And, I, you know, you try to be respectful of that, whether it's something that's not anticipated or you, you know, maybe had some time to prepare for it. So, Jim, are you, um, your background reflected, what is your background? What do you do? I presume you're not a full-time writer. No, I'm not a full-time writer, um, but I do have a military background. I'm a, I'm a disabled veteran, but uh, I was honorably discharged, not medically discharged. Um, when I got out of the military, I became an IT contractor, and that's what I do full-time. But, um, you know, 
writing is a, is a passion of mine, and I've done writing since I was a, a kid in, in high school and middle school. And, uh, you know, I wrote all the terrible angsty poetry and all that kind of stuff. And and um, I've always wanted to write a novel. And uh, so I could talk more about uh, photography. On the back of my first book, there's a picture of a, of a church, and that's actually in Culpeper, Virginia. And um, this kind of, you know, prompted the first story. Uh, I was driving down the street in Culpeper and I saw this church and I stopped and I took a picture of it because I just thought it was very interesting and um, totally forgot about it and about uh, was six months to a year later I was taking family photos and I was going through the camera roll and I saw the picture of the church in there and I went oh I remember that church that was a really cool interesting church and so all these ideas and thoughts came flooding in about uh, you know what if somebody was trapped inside and what if there was you know someone you know banging on the door trying to get out and I'm out there just taking pictures you know being totally oblivious <laughs> and uh, so that kind of prompted the first chapter of the book and, and it starts off and Clifford D the main character of Clifford's War um, is uh, trapped in this church and he's trying to get out and he's you know, strapped down to a to a table like a little altar uh, from these notorious killers, and he frees himself, and he's able to get out and escape. And that's like the the opening chapter of the book. So, so, Ellen, your the Sophie Medina books were when was the the most first book? Well, yeah, they were. Is this the fourth? Sophie book? It's the fourth, right. I wrote two back in 2013 and 2015. It's the only time I got two years between books, um, which, because as, as you know, John, I mean, it's one a year, and that, right. that is quite a pace. You were talking about that earlier. Um, when you've got a publisher and a deadline and a lot of people going to work in the morning, you know, making this all happen. Um, so they would come out in 2013 and 2015. And then I, I moved publishers, and my, um, I was with Minotaur, and they um, they wanted to go back to the other series, so I wrote four there, and then I moved publishers again, um, and they um, they were. I said, look, I, I you know I really feel like I have an affinity for the for the series about about a photojournalist, and they were um, kind enough. And John, I think you know this. Um, there was eight years between books, and that's an eternity in publishing. But but there were other books in between. There were yes, there yeah there were there were another four books. Um, but in a series, to bring somebody back, it's like you're resurrecting somebody from the dead. Just about. Um, and so, um, so this is the, the third and the fourth, but the first and the second were published in 2013 and 2015. Now, I have to say that, if Ellen, I don't know if you want to do this or if, if you want me to do this, but Ellen's research process is a history lesson. I think, I th I think <laughs> you write your you. books around the history that interests you. There was one that was essentially the uh, Jackie Kennedy family that was that that you really liked, right. and then you drilled mm -hmm. down into mm -hmm. that. And there's it's really interesting. It, it just, um, but thank you. Uh, I've always told you you work too hard. I, I, I much prefer to make stuff up. And I didn't mean to allude to the fact that, yes, you write about what you know, but, you know, all you have to do is read the little author's note on yours or Ellen's or yours, you know, and it talks about the, the pages that it goes through to research to put all of that in because you want it. You want people to believe what you're writing, even though it's fiction, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. that that they have some level of respect for what you've done. Oh, I, I think research, I think I can speak for everybody, research is the rabbit hole. It's, <laughs> it's the thing that you realize... You spend a lot of time there. And you take trips, yeah, and you do I things... Yeah, that, do. Okay. Oh, is that what Greece was? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you with the IRS? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. We're on the radio. No. Um, <laughs> now, there's sometimes you realize, okay, this, this is, I'm just, I'm just running down the internet rabbit hole. I'm not right. really. Baby goats in pajamas have nothing to do right. with Jonathan Grave blasting out, right. you know. So, um, but right. it, it, I think research is is. Is kind of the root of, of what we do. Of course. Uh, it I mean, it, it was, is, and you, it's so much, it's so fascinating. I mean, I think that's the thing as a journalist. When I when I started writing the Wine Country series, I was in London, and my, my publisher wanted me, my edit, my, actually my agent wanted me to write a book set in a vineyard because I'd taken a trip there when we came back to the United States on home leave. And I said, no, no, I want to write a book in a foreign setting. And she said, well, Ellen, you live in England. Virginia is a foreign setting. And I said, well, I don't know anything about wine. And she said, um, you're a journalist. You'll find out. 
Right, Maria? I mean, uh, it, it, absolutely. And I don't even realize I'm doing it, Ellen. And mm-hmm. like my adult children will say to me, you realize when you went to meet that person that you were interviewing them. And I was like, Mm -hmm. no, I wasn't. I was just, but you're interested in people and you want to find out. And so you ask the questions. So anyway. The one thing that I find so interesting is it wasn't all that long ago that I was writing for the Washington Post. It was pretty much before I got published back when I was back in the United States. It was like in 2005. You had to be so careful. You couldn't reveal anything. You couldn't, you know, you had to be very aware that this person had a private life. Now, everything's on the Internet. I mean, there's nothing that's not private. I think that's just a really fascinating change in how there's just everything's out there now. Yeah. Yeah, going back to research, um, when I first started my first book, at, uh, I, it was um, probably 2016, 2017 time frame, but I had poor writing habits. So I would only write like a, a few paragraphs here, a few paragraphs there. And if it wasn't for, you know, the COVID quarantine happening, um, I wouldn't have finished the book probably. So um, I had to do a lot of internet research because I wasn't familiar with, with Kentucky where the first book takes place. Um, uh, I chose Kentucky because uh, it was the home state of a, a fallen soldier friend of mine and I want to kind of honor him by, by using his home state and uh, and I'm also a, a bourbon fan as well so you know I knew it had to involve bourbon <laughs> <laughs> it, it always comes back to bourbon yeah. am I right <laughs> so um, so I, anyway so I chose Kentucky but I, I've never been to Kentucky so I had to do a lot of like online research about landscapes and how, how you know like the, and bourbon and bourbon <laughs> yeah bourbon research is always the best and uh, I got to say, uh, for, for this event coming up this uh, this weekend, I had to do wine research. It was, was uh, absolutely terrible doing oh, doing. Oh, the bird. Oh, the bird. Our last minute. One, John, why don't you talk a little bit about the event, plug the event, because we do have to go to break. So okay. Let, let, let's kind of wrap this up. I will be there. Ellen Crosby will be there. Uh, Jay Dennison Reed, Jim Reed will be there. I'm Hawking Harm's Way and a couple of other books. I think they're also going to be there, too. The Victoria Emerson series. The event is called... Unraveling the Unknown is going to be um, moderated by Lee Doty of um, Shepherd University. Uh, there are tickets for sale through fourseasonsbooks.com. It'll be 1 o'clock at the train station at the end of East German Street in, Martin, in uh, Shepherdstown. I hope to see everyone there. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, J.D., for, for joining us. Uh, this is portion of the show brought to you by Ken Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. ParsonsFord.com My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family.